What's your best damn it? I've been a good person all my life and now I'm going to do something bad story? Story one. I lived with random roommates one summer in college. This one guy used to regularly wake up to his alarm, hit snooze, and then managed to leave for the day without ever turning it off. He always locked his door and it would just go off endlessly. I complained about it constantly, but he still would never manage to turn it off. It woke me up an hour earlier than I needed every single day and it was driving me mad. Finally, one day he forgot to close his door so I took the radio, disassembled it, removed the speaker, and then put it all back together and set the correct time. I think he missed a couple quizzes because of it, but fudge it, he deserved it. He finally got a new alarm, which had a much shorter snooze timer, and it never happened again. It was awesome. Story 2. Everyone seems to be adding their high school bully stories. I think I'll add mine. I was a big kid growing up, but a real softy. You could tell by looking at me that even though I was 5, 11, and 210 at the age of 12, that I wouldn't do anything. I got picked on a lot as a result. The littler bullies got to get major props by making me tear up. One day, the kid who sat behind me in class had been flicking me in the back all day and I finally asked the teacher to stop him. She said, and I still flipping, remember this at 25, are you going to cry now? In the most disgusted sounding voice an adult can level at a child. I was crushed by the adult figure responding in that way and was deeply shaken. 15 minutes later, my bully, having been affirmed by the teacher pretty much, decided he would walk by me and break my pencil. I didn't go into a fit of rage or scream or shout. I started crying softly. I stood up and slowly walked to the bully. The teacher asked me why I was standing up, but I wasn't in a state to answer her. I lifted up this kid who weighed about half as much as me by the neck and the testicles and slowly walked, still crying, to the closed classroom window, knocking the teacher out of the way with one shoulder. I slammed him into the window three or four times before it broke off the hinges and then proceeded to shove him out of the window. The storm that followed included my parents suing the school and the teacher and winning. If anyone reads this buried deep in the comments, I'd be happy to explain how that happened. Edit. Story sure. The school kept video logs of every day of class via a camera setup. They had 200 plus days of me being bullied on camera, 40 plus reports from me and my parents that I was being bullied, and zero response to any of it. Didn't even move my seat in the classroom. The teachers and principal become responsible when they take you under their protection. They legally are both responsible for the bully and letting them do what they are doing, and the safety of the child being bullied. It took about a month of court hearings to come to a settlement. Edit. Thank you for the gold. Story 3. This is unfortunately not my story, but I did get to witness it. A few years back, we got a very large snowfall. My neighbor decides to take his two small children, five and two, out to build a snowman. The kids were so proud of it, they could not wait to show anyone walking down the street what they had made. We wake up the next morning to see tire tracks through the neighbor's front yard, going right through the newly complied snowman. When the kids found out, they were very distressed and crying. So being the awesome dad he was, he took them back out and rebuilt the snowman. Wake up the next morning, same things happens again! Refer to video above. So this time, the guy and his kids build the snowman around this giant boulder that he had in his front yard as part of his landscaping. About 2 o'clock o'clock in the morning, I hear a loud crash and look out my street to see a truck hobbling down the road with breathe coming out of it. Needless to say, the kids were not as upset about their snowman the next day. Story 4. I would always help my family, friends, neighbors, and anyone they knew with anything without asking for anything in return. Child care, computer problems, house repairs, etc. I lived with an older woman out in San Francisco in an old Victorian for four months. Since I arrived, I fixed and replaced quite a few things around the place. Plumbing, faucets, hose, heaters, couch, toilet, toilet seat, washing machine. About a week before I left, she wanted me to build her a bookshelf. I told her I'd do it if I received compensation. She got angry saying that it's just a bookshelf and that I can build it no problem. She fails to notice that she doesn't have the equipment to build it, and I'd probably have to rent the tools and told her if she wants one to just buy it, that I'd help her put it together. She got even angrier and said, I give you a place to stay and you won't even help me build a shelf? I couldn't hold it in any long. I screamed, I pay to live here. I pay for my stay, my food, and whatever else I use up while here. You could have spent money hiring someone to fix everything that I did in this place. I bet the cost in repairs would be more than what I pay per month living here. So a week later, her still angry at me. I left without paying last month's rent. Story 5. There was a kid in my math class that would sit and tout his superiority over me and tell me how much better he is than me in every facet of life. I sat there in class for a good three months enduring this. I never replied except to ask him to, please go away, or can you leave me alone? I'm trying to listen work. I even asked my teacher twice if I could move away and she said no. Then one day, with him making fun of me as usual, something inside of me finally snapped, and I turned to him, 
all of my pent-up rage swimming in me and said, Shut the fudge up before I punch you in your god oh no smug face. He then gets up and say, Come on, let's fight. I almost got up with him before the sweet Amish girl that I was friends with said, Don't do it. Sit down now. I regained my composure for a minute and sat down. He sat down and said, That's what I thought, bad person. I just calmly turned to my teacher and said, Can I move, please? She said no, and I just turned around, gripped the kid's disc and flipped it, with him in it, completely over, and turned back to my teacher and said, How about now? I had never felt more satisfied and angry at the same time in my life. No one cared about the kid because they all knew what happened. A football player even came up to me and just said, I would have thrown the desk after flipping it. Story 6. So there's this wretched woman who owned a boutique next door from the restaurant where I work. One day she came into the pub and was her usual entitled self. She ordered a club sandwich with extra, extra, extra crispy bacon and an extra spicy Bloody Mary, since apparently her taste buds stopped working years ago. I go to the bar to get her Bloody Mary. I douse the ice in Tabasco sauce and fill it up with vodka and our already spicy Bloody Mary mix. Then I add a bit more Tabasco sauce just for myself around a full ounce of Tabasco in a 10 ounces glass. To my surprise, she loved it. Uh, it came time to send the sandwich order to the kitchen. I put her order in and added a custom modifier to the ticket. In my frustration, I wrote, set the bacon on fire and put the ashes on the sandwich. When her order was almost ready, the cook asked me if I was serious about it. I replied, well, she ordered a club with extra, extra, extra crispy bacon. He held up a spatula with three slivers of black, burnt meat that hardly looked like bacon at all. I chuckled, thinking he had pulled a joke on me. At this point, I was like, fudge it! That's what she asked for. He finished preparing the club. I brought it out to her ready and willing to take it back and have a new one made. She ate three quarters of the club and took the rest home, said it was the best time she'd been there. Tried as hard as I could to be an unpleasant person, and it didn't work? Story 7. I work as a teller for a bank, and a brand new customer was making a deposit for 50K. First deposit ever into the account. So, of course, there is going to be a hold on the check. I've always been nice and extend the offer to call on the check the next day, and if it clears, I'll manually release the hold. This dude was an unpleasant person from the start. He got very defensive and demanded there was no hold. I tried to explain I'll call on the item and I have a contact at the drawing bank, but he kept cutting me off. He then demanded I close his account. Instead of trying to talk him out of it, I didn't give a cow. One less rude customer is a win to me. So said okay and closed his account out for him right then and there. The dude was so dumbfounded I didn't try to convince him to keep it open. He ended up walked to my branch manager and started to complain about me. I yelled over. Mister, you asked me to close your account. Don't forget to mention that. Story 8. There was this guy who lived next to me in an apartment building. And every morning at 8.30, he would leave his apartment to go to work. I worked till late and would usually be asleep at this time. Every morning, he would ring my doorbell like five times and then go to work. I then proceed to get up and check the door. See, there's no one there. And then I can't go back to sleep. He thought it was funny and that I didn't really care but in all honesty, I needed the sleep. So one day I got up at 8.25 and when he came, before he knocked, I opened the door. I had a bullhorn waiting and shouted at the top of my lungs, fudge off. I honestly thought he cow himself. He never did that cow again. Finn, story nine. It was our last night in Fiji, so we thought we'd treat ourselves and go out for a nice dinner. We go to a restaurant that would normally be out of our price range, but fudge it, it'll probably be our last family holiday. For the entire entry and main course, these two little flipping, illegitimate child kids are running around screaming between tables, around the waiters, trying to get into the back of house. The waiter asked their parents to keep them seated, to which she responded, don't tell me what to do. What happens next time they run past our table? My foot just happened to be in the way. Kid hit the floor and skidded like two meters. Everyone knew it was me, but no one said anything at the time, partly because my family was trying not to laugh. Still don't feel bad. Story 10. I messed up the babysitter. I was in a marriage that was physically, intellectually, and verbally abusive. I was constantly accused of flipping the babysitter. For some reason, in my ex-wife's twisted mind, no matter how long I left the house, as soon as I crossed the threshold of the front door, my banana immediately went into the babysitter. Outside, moving cars around for two minutes, flipping the babysitter. Walk away from her in the grocery store, flipping the babysitter. Leave the bedroom at night to go take a pour out the water, flipping the babysitter. If my ex-wife closed her eyes for three seconds and couldn't see me, I was flipping the babysitter. I consider myself a pretty honorable person. While I was battling for custody, our marriage was still considered legal binding as the divorce wasn't finalized until custody was. I was busy trying to be an honorable person while my ex-wife was flipping pretty much everyone I knew to spite me. Our custody battle lasted three years. I was a saint in those three years.
didn't enter into another relationship, didn't have close relationship, quit drinking entirely, and focused completely on my daughter. As soon as I won custody and the paperwork was finished, one of the very first phone calls I made was to the babysitter. She was 19 when she first started babysitting for us. She was 23 when everything was finalized. I was about 28. I called her, we went to the bar, and that night we had sweaty, angry, spiteful, grudge-close relationship. Our mutual hate for my ex-wife reared its head and we used that energy to fudge the ever-living cow out of each other. I was seriously concerned we were going to break each other. That kind of close relationship. We didn't even try to hide it from my ex-wife because at this point we both disliked her. Not only had she constantly accused me of flipping the babysitter, she accused the babysitter of flipping me and physically attacked the babysitter. We were grudge flipping. That was it, plain and simple. It only lasted about two months. Two really great months filled with really great close relationship. We knew from the beginning it was just spite close relationship, and we eventually agreed to go our separate ways. Normally, I am not a spiteful person. I don't have close relationship outside of a relationship, but we had just been accused of it so much that we were like, fudge it, might as well do it. Story 11. When I was in high school, my family had come over for Thanksgiving dinner, and my younger brother, by about two years, also in high school, started to badmouth and talk back to everyone in a yelling manner. While always being prone to migraines, I was still the let's talk this out in a nice and calm matter kind of guy. That night, however, I had a severe migraine and was getting highly annoyed by his yelling. After asking him kindly to stop and getting blown off in front of my entire family, I just swept him up and slammed him on the ground hard enough to know the wind out of him. I figured since I'd never done anything like that before, I would just get a slap on the wrist. Everyone just looked at me as though they couldn't believe their eyes. I then left and fell asleep and the next morning everyone pretended it didn't happen. The end. Story 12. I'm a pretty big guy, but I am very light on my feet. Whenever I go into a crowd, I am very polite and I can stop on a dime when people dart in front of me. I just got back from London, and this is a city where people give zero fudge about anything, especially on the tube. Nobody waits for anyone to get off, they just shove their way in. I had enough. I started laying shoulders into people as I got off. An oblivious young woman of five, Two inches, 115 pounds, with her eyes glued to her iPhone, did not stand a chance. Slightly taller Frenchmen cursed at me. I'm sure what they were saying was brutal, but I couldn't understand them. Perhaps my crowning achievement came at Harrods. I was walking in a straight line and going with the flow. Two Asian women started to go upstream. One of them tried to squeeze in between me and a tea display. I wasn't yielding. She spun full circle and started yelling at me. However, she wasn't paying attention and walked straight into the tea display, which collapsed. I felt like I was in the video for Bittersweet Symphony. Story 13. Late to the party, but 15 years ago, I was in my first year of teaching the 7th grade. Fresh out of college. I had a kid that year who had been held back twice, so he was 15 years old in the 7th grade. He was massive, probably about 6 1 inch and 220 pounds. He had a bad reputation with the entire staff, so much so that I got warnings from other teachers about him. He and I had a decent rapport, although he never did much for the first semester in terms of homework or studying. About halfway through the year, for reasons I still don't know, he approached me and told me that his mom was sick with cancer and that he knew he wasn't doing well in school, but he was so busy trying to take care of her at home that he had little time for his studies. He said he didn't want to be held back a third time, but he also had a reputation to uphold as the school's badass. He asked me not to tell any other students or staff. I made a deal with him to tutor him privately, find some extra credit for him, etc. Basically, I told him I would pass him on as long as he promised to give me as much effort and time as he could muster given his circumstances at home, and he really obliged for the next five months. Good guy part out of the way. Fast forward to the last three weeks of school. I don't know what I ate for lunch that day, but I had to take the worst cow of my life. Being a first-year teacher, I didn't want to leave my class unattended, but I couldn't wait. I frantically tried to find someone in my hall to cover my class for a few minutes, but all of the other teachers were busy and holding it wasn't an option. I made some lousy excuse about going to blow my nose, went to the student bathroom, took the quickest cow I can remember, and returned to class confident that nothing untowards had occurred. I was wrong. Turns out that in the 2.5 minutes I was gone, the kids were goofing around, and some dumbass made an offhand comment to my aforementioned prodigy about screwing his mom or something. In a story that was corroborated by about 15 7th graders, this kid calmly stood up, walked across the room, and bad person slapped the cow talker so hard that it drove him to the ground. And what did I do? I said, oh, you guys must be messing with me, and went about the rest of the class as if nothing had happened. I regret nothing. The kid's mom passed away a few years later, and I still get email updates from him once in a while. Turns out he decided to be an engineer and build bridges. Story 14. 
There was this guy who, who bounced between my group of friends and another, but whenever I was around, he felt the need to turn me into the punching bag of the group. He often took it to the point that everyone else would have to tell him to stop or felt the need to apologize on his behalf, though he never did. We'll call him Jimmy. I just let Jimmy carry on this way for a couple of years because I hate direct confrontation. But one night, my close group of friends were all at this going away party for a girl we knew, and it was being held at her really sweet condo. To paint a vague picture, think of those really incredibly nice display models you see in magazines with the faux antique furniture, four bedroom, etc. The only detail that you really need to know is that there was a massive upstairs balcony that extended over a large pool. There was a girl at the party who seemed into me and that I kept making small talk with at different points in the night. She looked a little like Courtney Cox, so let's call her Monica. My friends encouraged me to go after her because I had broken up with my girlfriend over a month before. She came and found me later while I was sitting at a table on the balcony upstairs. We were having fun until Jimmy sat on the other side of the table and started talking down to me. He was already there with his girlfriend, but he did this just because he knows he can. I tried to stay calm and be the bigger man, so I asked her if she wanted another beer. She was trying to be nice and asked if Jimmy needed one too. As I'm turning away, I heard Jimmy say, Hey, Jemperson is group bad person. He knows to get me a beer. I don't have to ask. It was at this point that I decided that payback was long overdue. I decided that Jimmy did need a beer, but I shook the hell out of it before I went back outside, fully prepared to fight him after he opened the beer. I handed him the beer from across the table, and he turned to Monica and said, See? He was still making eye contact with her when he popped the tab on the can. It spewed in his face, but he ended up completely flipping out, jumped out of his chair choking and snorting, then backing into the railing of the balcony before flipping over the side. I was snapped out of my shock by the sound him hitting the water. It turns out that he landed clear of the edge of the pool but had belly flopped hard on the water. Also, while talking to Monica, he had popped a boner which apparently took most of the impact. Hitting the water had given him a penile fracture and he was wailing in pain. Someone called an ambulance and rushed him to the hospital, where he had to have emergency surgery and essentially had to ice his junk for weeks. I ended up at Monica's apartment afterwards. I have no regrets. Story 15. When I was in grade school, a kid came to our school. His name was Brandon. Brandon was a tool. For about a week, our class was nice to him, being the new kid and all. But after that, people generally treated him like cow. I felt bad watching all of it. The kid had obviously had a hard life, so I treated him nice despite everyone else. You'd think that he might respect the effort I made to be nice to him and be nice back, but no. The guy was one of the biggest to me ever. Called me boy, an idiot, told me I'd never get girls, everything. Great. Flash forward about six years. He went to the same high school as me. I gave him rides home. I helped him with homework. I talked to him when he was alone, and yet he was still just as big of a thorn. So the summer after junior year, a group of about 30 kids from our school went on a trip to Europe. We visited a couple different countries. It was a hot day in Berlin. We were jet-lagged, running on little sleep, physically tired, dehydrated, and on top of that, it was almost 100 degrees out. I had just about had enough of everyone, especially Brandon. As we were walking, I pulled out my water bottle to take a drink. Brandon walked up and thought it would be a good idea to take it out of my hands and use the remaining water. I promptly stuck my hand down my pants, wiped it across my butt to gather as much sweat as possible, and slapped him across the face with it. It felt great. Edit. Came back to this post late, but thank you guys. Story 16. From the ages of 6 to 16, my little brother was a horrible, mean, illegitimate child, and I tried my best to simply tolerate it in my shy and mild manner. But one day when he must have been being particularly horrible, I was standing in the kitchen and he walks in and calls me ugly. And I slapped him so hard he actually collapsed on the floor screaming. My mom comes in and he tells her frantically, she hit me! And my mom looks at me, looking wide-eyed and terrified, I'm sure, and looks at him and looks at me and says, well, maybe you shouldn't have been standing so close to your sister, and then leaves. Story 17. Night out with friends, I got slightly drunk, had a nice buzz going on. There was this one group standing next to us at the bar with all couples by the looks of it, except this one girl. Well, this said girl started chatting up this random guy she seemed attracted to. But as this was going on out of nowhere, some other girl with a really disgusting stuck-up attitude walks right in between them and interrupts the conversation. She starts talking really loudly at this girl and asks her WTF does she think she's doing? Clearly this guy is way out of her league. I'm known at this place and everyone around noticed this loud, obnoxious, bad person of a girl. I don't know why, but this really got me pissed off. I took my pitcher of beer and held it above my head, so it seems as if I just didn't want anyone bumping into me and spilling it. I started walking towards this girl and as soon as I got close enough, I did a fake trip and spilled this whole pitcher right on this girl's head. 
I looked up with a fake shocked face and kind of grinned while saying sorry. Laughs were had as this girl rushed out of the place crying in embarrassment. Story 18. I know I'm way behind on this thread, but if anyone reads this when it's buried, enjoy. I work in a processing center for mortgage applications. There's a call center above my office, and we have like three buildings in this one location. Anyway, in my office, we're not really trained to do call center style work, taking cow from customers all day, getting screamed at when things don't go their way, etc. We're just the processing guys, right? We look at all your documents and decide whether or not you can have a mortgage. So we do have like two phones that take external calls, i.e. calls from other departments, not from customers. So some from the actual call center is getting screamed at by this one dude, so she transfers him straight through to my department. Enter my colleague, we'll call her McPreggers. You get one guess as to why. I'm sat opposite her and can hear this dude on the other end of the phone just flipping unloading into her ear canal. Wasn't that alluring sounding, I assure you? Until it happens. She starts to weep. No sound, no sniffling, no reaction whatsoever, except a constant stream of tears. Now, I've been in similar situations when training call center staff and customer-facing staff before. Generally, you have to help people find a way to deal with cow like this on their own and build up their own defenses for it. This is a 24-ish-year-old pregnant girl with no business being screamed at, being screamed at by some asshat. I get up from my desk, walk around to hers, take the phone away from her, and hit the hold customer button. Mick Preggers, take five. Stop worrying about it and come back when you're ready. She walks off. Now to Ashat on the phone. Good afternoon, sir. My name's The Average Gatsby, and I'd like to help you resolve your query as efficiently as possible. Before we continue, I'd like to apologize for abruptly putting you on hold like that, but here's why. McPreggers, the girl with whom you were speaking to in a completely unacceptable and childish manner just now, is heavily pregnant, and you have reduced her to tears. What can I help you with today? Ashat tightens up right quick. His issue is sorted within two, three minutes. Wasn't a tough one, just a tough customer. And he's trying to get off the phone again. Before you go, sir, can I just ask you to hold for one moment, please? He actually flipping stays on the line. I go get McPreggers. Hello, sir. Thanks for holding. I'm just going to pass you back to my colleague, to whom you may apologize if you feel unnecessary. Thank you and have a lovely afternoon. All I hear is McPreggers. That's okay. It's okay. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Click. Story 19. Went to see Cloverfield at the movie theater with my then six-year-old. We'd been following the goofy online clues leading up to the film's release, etc. We get there and there's a bunch of teenagers sitting about eight rows ahead. One girl is unbelievably loud. During every lull in the action, she brays, I call nonsense! Maybe funny the first time, but after almost an hour of jittery action and crashes, not so much. Shush. End of the movie, and my kiddo is hanging on the edge of her seat for the ending. Final scene, very dramatic. Screen goes dark. And for the 50th time, I call nonsense. So I grabbed my overly huge drink cup, take a handful of ice out of the bottom, and throw it as hard as I can at the back of this girl's head from several rows back. Real mature, I know. A 34-year-old suburban mother should know better. Loud McMouthy down front starts shrieking and trying to figure out who did it. I just stay put until I can start acting like a grown-up again. The look on my kid's face, though, she seemed simultaneously appalled and tickled. I did ask that we please not mention this to Grandma. Story 20. There's a neighborhood pool down the road from my parents' home. One day I had taken my two cousins, one of whom is autistic, and my two sisters to swim. Theater ages rang from 9, 13. It wasn't a busy day and we were the only ones there, and it's a small pool with a lifeguard on duty. My sister forgets the towels, so I tell the high schooler lifeguard that I'll be right back. I just need to run to the vehicle right outside the gate to get them out of the car. He automatically has a pissy attitude because no one has been here all day and he can't leave early because we showed up and apparently he has a huge stick up his peach. So I walk 10 feet away and can still see my cousins and sisters playing in the pool. My autistic cousin is just kind of splashing around, having a good time, laughing, not do anything really that distracting or obnoxious, except for maybe being a little loud. The next thing I know, I see the lifeguard grabbing him out of the water by his arm and screaming at this boy. I immediately start running towards the gate as he throws my cousin outside and locks it. By the time I get there, my cousin is alone and crying while my siblings and his brother are yelling at the lifeguard to open the gate. My mama bear instinct clicked on, and I broke that flimsy lock like a viking in search of pillage. I'm always nice to people who work jobs like this and try to be understanding because I know that people can be rude. But this man had put a bruise on my autistic cousin who I saw wasn't doing anything except being a little loud. That smug little mother bad person was just sitting at his chair like there wasn't any children begging to be let out after he locked the gate. 
I'm a 6-1 girl, and this boy was maybe 5 or 3 fifths, 5 at the most. I went full force southern, and the accent that came out of my mouth was one I have never heard before. Boy, you get the fudge out of that chair before I come up there and rip your throat out. I'm not proud of how I acted. Sometimes I think I overreacted, but it was purely on instinct. I got an award in school for being a good role model. I mentored kids. I volunteer to teach art classes to special needs students, and I give flowers to people on special occasions. I bake cookies for my coworkers. I give out the big candy bars on Halloween. I save turtles from the road if I see one. I don't think I've ever really intentionally done anything bad to someone, but I punched this boy in the mouth. I punched him like he was my prison bad person. I laid this kid out. I decked him right in his worker mouth. Anyways, to wrap this story up, the police were called. The manager that came in was able to pull up footage of what had happened. The lifeguard was asked to leave the property following termination. After the police saw the huge bruise on my cousin's arm, they talked to the manager and no charges were pressed, and the cops bought my cousin an ice cream cone and told me I punched like a man. The manager turned on the water slide, and we got to stay and have a wonderful time. Also, we get free refreshments from the snack bar now. Story 21. I'm generally a nice guy, but there is this one guy in my class that I've had several run-ins with. Most of the time, I'd just pass it off, but this time it nearly cost me my life, so what the fudge? Well, the year before, he bought this horrible-looking 48 Caddy, fixed it up, painted it, put some chrome on it, incredible interior, the whole deal. Well, it was one alluring beast of a car by the time this happened. Walking to my house at lunch because I got my learner's license late and can't drive without 18-plus-year-old yet. This guy takes his normal vehicle, truck, didn't drive his Cadillac regularly, didn't want to wreck it, I guess, and swerves into the oh-no sidewalk I was walking on while going 60 kilometers per H, rough estimate, in a school zone. Limit is 30. To clarify, he did this on purpose. Found out from a friend who was riding with him. Well, I was nearly hit. That night I went to his house, went into his garage, I was very surprised that he didn't have it locked, actually, and stabbed the fudge out of his Cadillac's tires, keyed as much as possible, and got right the fudge out of there. Never was caught, but I still do feel fairly guilty. Guy spent a lot of time and money on that thing, and I wrecked a lot of it. But on the other hand, it was only a couple thousand dollars to fix. What's that compared to my life? Story 22. When I was in elementary school, I had classes with these two girls. I had absolutely no beef with them whatsoever, let alone knew them very well at all, Jessica and Jacqueline. No relation. They were probably friends. One random afternoon, I'm waiting all by myself at the outdoor lunch tables. School was out, and I was waiting for my mom to pick me up. Then, like something out of a movie, these two make their way over to me from across the huge paved schoolyard of handball and basketball courts. The entire school is pretty much deserted, the sun at their backs. I smile and wave, recognizing them, but they have stoic and cold expressions on their faces. Without a single word, Jessica comes up and kicks me in the shins. Even though he claims he never taught me this, I swear on my honor as a man that my father gave me the most sage advice ever when I was in the third grade. He told me, I'm a nice guy, but I don't take any cow. Direct quote, I kicked her right back, same place, same intensity. The look on their faces were of shock and disbelief. They ran away completely dumbfounded that a boy would even think of kicking a girl, let alone act on it. Not a word was spoken of the incident afterward. Gender equality, bad person. Story 23. Last weekend, I was waiting at a crosswalk. The cars began to stop as they are supposed to, so I started to cross the road. There was an open lane, and I noticed that there was a car up the street that had every intention of just blowing through the crosswalk. This really pissed me off, especially because it was one of those really serious crosswalks that has a bunch of flashing lights and all that. As the car approached, I conjured the best loogie that could muster and spit. It happened to fly full force through the open window of the car and nailed the woman driving square in the face. The instant gratification was absoluteness priceless. Story 24. I had been working for an ice cream shop for over three years. I did everything their manager did and received 8.75 an hour. I was their best employee, I know this because the owners used to always tell me this. I got a tattoo, which was not against corporate rules, and two out of three of the owners did not mind. One of the owners, however, began cussing and yelling at me on a daily basis, despite everything I had done and was never doing anything wrong. I actually helped build their store up even more since I had started working there. But because of this tattoo, I was somehow now a poor employee in one of the owner's eyes. So one day, last week actually, I was working with her, and she went toddy back to use the restroom after scolding at me for, again, no apparent reason. And I jumped out of the drive through window, ran to my car, and left her there alone. The only thing I left behind was a note taped to the drive through window which read, I have had enough of your disrespect. Story 25. I used to always be that guy who would cover co-workers' shifts when they were in need of help. 
That is, until my boss forgot to give me a day off that I specifically requested, so I could see my best friend since childhood one last time before he left for the Navy. Everyone refused to cover my shift, even though I knew that none of them had anything better to do on that day anyways. Fortunately, I was able to see him very early in the morning, but I did not get to spend the day with him as I had planned. But now I refuse to cover anyone else's shifts, no matter what their reason is. But my girlfriend is having the baby that day. Nope. Sorry, I won't cover it. But my mom is on her deathbed. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, no can do. I've had my arms amputated. Well, best learn to use your feet then. Story 26. Not me, but my dad. At our old house, we had a small pumpkin patch in our front yard. But one year, it just took off. These pumpkins were the size you'd buy for a cow load of money at a professional farm. But a few weeks before Halloween, these local punks thought it would be funny to steal about four or five of them and throw one a day at our house from the back of their pickup truck. My dad gets flipping pissed and makes a wild E. Coyote-esque slingshot using giant industrial-sized rubber belts. So he loads this catapult of death with the biggest pumpkin from the patch and waits in the garage. At around 10.30, I heard the sounds of the punk's truck come screaming around the corner onto our street. And I watch out the window as Punk Hash One standing in the back of the truck picks up a pumpkin from the truck bed. And at that moment, my dad's friend, having been recruited into the scheme, flings up our garage door and my dad releases this huge pumpkin from the slingshot of death and pain. I swear to God that pumpkin hit Mach 5 and it nailed the truck dead on against the passenger side door at about a million feet per second. It sounded like a cannon going off. The truck actually skids backwards with the force and starts to fishtail before Punk Hash 2 can straighten it out and take off down the street. I saw that truck parked outside the local auto body shop. The side door was completely caved in. It was beautiful. Story 27. Throwaway account. Obvious reason. Always getting walked on, stepped on in life. Never would stand up for myself. Best friend. 10 years older than I at the time. I was 21. Used the information I was feeding him about my relationship problems to seduce and fudge my then fiance. Lost my oh no mind and looked for him to fight me. Give me my honor back. He wouldn't. I got drunk one night and went to his house about two in the morning with a three gallon container of gasoline and burned down his newly purchased Mustang convertible to the ground. Never seen flames jump that high. He was so afraid of what I might do next if he pressed charges. They never came and never gave up my name. Story 28. Well, I haven't been a nice person my whole life or even most of it. In fact, I've been quite the piece of cow most of my days. Back in college, I went to quite a few different parties. Different women every week occasionally partook in recreational sweets and alcohol. Well, I had been hanging out at this one party and this one girl was sloppy drunk and she was all over me, trying to kiss me and grabbing my junk. I didn't want anything to do with her because she was too drunk and I don't find people who lose control attractive. As it turns out, she passes out on a couch and a few guys pick her up and go upstairs. They say they are going to put her to sleep. I'm not a huge guy, and I'm not exactly some badass fighter or anything. Nonetheless, I decide I have some kind of responsibility to check on this girl who is a complete stranger, one time before I head out. I walk upstairs to check on this girl, and there are five guys in the room with her, groping her and undressing her. Five guys, like one more than four, and I'm unarmed and outmatched several times over, and a girl is going to get gang assaulted if I do nothing. I call the cops, but as we know when you need cops in seconds, they are several minutes away. I ran back upstairs and told the guys, and they finally freaked out and left. This girl is completely unconscious, laying on her back, her clothes ripped, and she starts throwing up and choking. I get clothes on her as best I can and carry her to my car and drive her to the hospital. This is where cow gets real. I get her to the hospital, and they take her in, and I've done my good deed for the day. Not quite. I get handcuffed and questioned for hours. These cops are trying to get me to confess to assaulting this girl. It was early morning before my lawyer got me released. It almost went really badly for me. I've been a thorn all my life and I do one good thing and I almost become a felon close relationship offender. Go to pound me in the peach prison. Story 29. I was visiting a friend in New York for New Year's. His apartment building was having some heavy parties. The whole building was alive. I felt pretty good. I'd finished the semester with good grades and had done an excess of volunteer work, which is a requirement for my school's program that basically puts you a little bit above the normal students. I walked down the hallway basking in the golden happy shine that burst from all around me. I got in the elevator. It was a bit full with people just standing around, but there was definitely enough room. I walked in. I turned around towards the door, and I see this really fat woman in a motorized wheelchair. I'll never forget that chin. Calling it a double chin wouldn't do it justice. It was like Mickey D's dumped their lard in a bucket. The bucket was eaten, digested, and pooped out by the pearl diver, and then dumped in her chin skin. It's sort of bad to judge people by the appearance, but she looked like pure evil. She had the grumpiest face I'll ever see in my life. Probably because of all of that pearl diver lard. 
She was about 30 feet from the door down the hallway, going a steady five miles per hour. She looked right at my eyes and knew what was coming. There was some room for a wheelchair if we squeezed tight, and I felt like being a banana. So I slowly raised my hand and pressed the close button. She knew I did it. And then what sort of made me feel bad was that she leaned forward in her motorized wheelchair, like sprinters or cyclists buckling down and getting cow done. Alas, she was already going full throttle. I doubt that aerodynamic maneuver did much. I know it didn't, because the door closed and it was silent in the elevator. As it rose, we heard the screams of the woman in the motorized wheelchair. Edit. She saw me the next morning as I was walking out and left her business at the front desk. There's sort of a little maze after the door that leads to the pool and the parking lot. It's like a bunch of four-foot walls. I had my swim trunks on and a towel, and I was about to meet some people. But it was sort of getting awkward. So I headed to the parking lot, where there was a huge flight of stairs, which means the ramp is even longer, and it went the opposite way. As I walked down the stairs, I heard the motor stop as well as person fudge. Edit to for slash u slash typewriter true. The seconds before that faithful press of a button, I had a moral dilemma. It looked like she was pretty unhappy. Doing her a solid would help her out a lot. My motto had always been that being happy and expressing it would almost always return it, like in Judaism. The world is a mirror. Fat chance. Edit 3. Thanks for the Reddit gold internet stranger. I've been wanting to know the lounge is like. I'll repay the Reddit community somehow. Maybe I'll make some art. I'll post it in slash r slash pic sometime. Somewhere appropriate. Thank you. Edit 4. Guys, I'm Asian. I'm not black. Story 30. The kids that lived below me in college always threw parties and used to pour out the water down the back stairwell. I would then have to walk through their pour-out-the-water puddles to take my garbage out. I mentioned it half-jokingly a couple of times and they blew me off. I tolerated it for a bit, but one Saturday there was literally half an inch of pour-out-the-water on each step, and it would drip down on you when you got below it on the spiral staircase. So one night, I came home hammered and they had left their door unlocked. They were all passed out after a party. I whipped out my banana and I pissed on everything. Dishes, the TV, the couch, their beds, them, inside the fridge, outside the fridge, on their girlfriends slash hookups. Fudge those guys. Story 31. My girlfriend of seven plus years just left me and admitted that she's cheated on me multiple times over the years. One of the guys had a wife and a three-month-old child when he hooked up with her. A few days ago, I texted him to let him know that I know and got him to confess while taking screenshots of the important parts to go along with her confession. I then said that I think his wife should know and he flipped out saying that he didn't start anything and it was cool with his wife because she made out with an ex three years ago. I then gave him a speech that in my mind should be read in Liam Neeson's voice from Taken basically saying, I just wanted to let you know that I know and I want you to worry because you don't know if a phone call, email, Facebook message or package will be the one thing that brings this all down. And if your wife is okay with it, then you have nothing to worry about. But if not, you deserve every flipping ounce of pain and punishment coming to you. He promptly stiffu and never messaged me back. Now I'm debating about periodically sending him I know messages akin to I know what you did last summer to make him lose his mind. Felt good. Edit. For clarification, he knew of me, but we weren't friends. He texted me after I suspected things to assure me that nothing happened because he would never jeopardize his relationship with his wife. She also didn't get out of this without consequence. She got kicked out of the house and cut off from everything. She also burned all bridges with my family, her family, and our friends because they never expected her to do something like that to me, and they all loved me. I only went after him because I know the pain that his wife would feel if she found out long after the fact, and who knows if he had done it before or will continue to do it. My ultimate goal was to scare the ever-loving cow out of him and hopefully pressure him to confess on his own. I'm still debating about following up with it on his end or if I should just let her know directly and leave it at that. Also, for those that think that this is a troll post, I assure you it's not. This pain is the most real I have ever felt, and if I can feel better with mere words instead of my fists, I consider that a success. Story 32. This doesn't really count as bad, it was more just mean. But it's still one of my favorite evil memories. Yeah, I have a pretty boring life. I was one of those smart kids who was always willing to help people understand what we were supposed to be learning in class. Tutoring, study help, whispering explanations in class while the teacher's back was turned, whatever. For the most part, people appreciated it, but sometimes they thought they could take advantage of me. So this guy Kevin was sitting next to me during a multiple choice test and started to blatantly copy my answers. What? I could have helped you study if you'd asked, Kevin. I got frustrated and started to bubble in not just the wrong answer, but the stupidest answer for each question. Kevin followed my every lead. I stood up as though to turn in my test. Kevin followed. I dropped down to tie my shoe, he turned in his test, 
and I returned to my desk to erase my wrong answers and fix everything. I don't know what happened to that kid since my family moved away, but I still think of him once in a while and think, stupid Kevin. Screw that guy. Story 33. I was the only one without kids or a significant other where I worked for five years. I'd like to think I have a pretty good work ethic. I worked alone on graveyard shift, 45, 50 hours a week, unsupervised, self-directed. This included holidays. I usually didn't mind because, hey, time and a half. That said, one year, I'd made plans to go out of town for the long 4th of July weekend, spend some time at the beach. Got denied the time off, so the night of the 4th, I drank a six-pack of my favorite beer in the executive conference room and watched the city fireworks show through the big plate glass windows. Fired up the digital projector, theater system, logged into my desktop remotely, and played music the rest of the night. Later that year, similar situation. Two old friends of mine were in town. We were going to go bar crawling for New Year's Eve. Even though I volunteered to work Christmas, for the third year in a row, I might add, and gladly did, I got denied again. I got a pretty big bottle of good champagne, terminated the bottle myself within an hour or so after midnight, and had myself a nice long nap. Set an alarm for an hour before the next shift was due. Luckily, it was an even slower night than the fourth had been. TLDR drank at work on two different holidays in the same year, not at company functions, because I could get away with it. Story 34. I was working at Geek Squad a few years back. Typically, I was calm, patient, and got things taken care of, especially good with the troublesome clients. We had our share of angry customers and incidents, but there was this one lady. She was unpleasant on wheels. She had been a regular at our store for about a year. After going out of my way to help her anytime she came in, and the only person who would, it just got to the point I would fix things to get her to leave. The very last time I helped her, I reset her password. Once she got onto the computer and booted into the desktop, there was censored photos on the background. She flipping flipped. It couldn't have been her kids or husband at home playing a prank. No, it was me. I planted it there right in front of her face slash eye roll. She threw cow. She slammed her laptop down, knocked cow off the shelves, screamed at customers, and tried to hit the manager. I had her address. All of that was on file in our star service tag system. Later that night, I went to the house and shoved cow under all of her car door handles. Story 35. When I was 19, I worked in a supermarket deli. All the regular customers loved me, except one guy. He was probably in his mid-50s and very conservative. The only reason he didn't like me was because I had long hair and tattoos. He was extremely rude to me every time he came in. He would say things like, If I was your father, I would cut off that hair in your sleep. He even told the store manager to fire me because having an employee with tattoos is a disgrace. So one day after my shift, I grabbed a large cup of coffee, and as I was leaving the store, I saw him getting out of his shiny silver Mercedes and walk into the store. He didn't notice me, so I walked right up to his car and dumped my steaming hot light and sweet coffee all over that mother car, then strolled off satisfied as cow. Never got caught. 